Hello, my name is Sylvie Kukassian. I am a marriage and family therapist and I've been coaching couples and singles for over seven years and working as a therapist for the last three years. The past few months have been kind of a rocky road for us. So what exactly are the five love languages? So the five love languages were created by Dr. Gary Chapman. He started noticing patterns of things that would be complained from each partner in a relationship. There's five fundamental expressions of love. And so those are the way that we actually receive it. Words of affirmation is a way of expressing love to your romantic partner. It can be anything from verbal compliment, encouraging words, and also being very humble in our words, not making demands from our partner, but gentle requests. How do people develop love languages? And there's actually two different ways we develop them. So as a child, have a certain way that our parents give love to us. If you were a child that spent a lot of quality time with your parents and they were really focused and present with you, then it would be natural for that to be your fundamental love language. But sometimes what happens is the opposite of that. My mom was very wordsy. She would praise me a lot, say like, oh wow, you did such a great job. So proud of you. I just got ready for work and I wrote her a couple of post-it notes and I'm just gonna place them around the house and I also wrote her a card. She left me all these little cute notes around the house. So there's a little good morning one. This is the first time she's done that. I'm really excited. All right, so getting into my car, I noticed something else. Okay, so she got me a card. It says, our life is perfectly amazing. <laughs> These words mean a lot to me, especially before I'm going to work. The second one is quality time, spending focused attention with your partner, physical touch, doesn't have to be necessarily sexual, but just having close proximity. My love language is acts of service. Acts of service is something that takes time, effort, energy, and planning. So if I know my partner loves me to do the chores at home, that's an act of service that I can give my partner. Maybe I also got it from my parents because they would always make me do chores around the house, like pat me on the back for doing them. After we took the test and I found out that she was acts of service, it kind of made a little more sense as to why she would get angry at me all the time. It's always her doing the laundry and picking up after me. <laughs> what I recommend the couples I work with to do is rather than waiting for an explosion moment, like a fight, because that usually happens when we don't feel fulfilled in our love language, I have them do a weekly exercise asking them, you know, if you could choose five acts of service that you would love for me to do. So the two things that I chose to do is one, I want to cook for her. I know she's been like kind of craving pokey. I already did like all our laundry. For once it's empty. Oh Here's my god, dinner. what is this? I have my own personal <laughs> cookie chef. Thank you. And the last is gifts. So in a lot of ancient traditions, gifts have been a very popular way of a visual and symbolic way of showing love to someone. I would probably say it'd be a tie up between gifts and touch. I'm an only child and an only grandchild. Growing up, I got a lot of gifts from my mom, my nanny, and my poppy. It's awesome that you can see right away that uh -huh. that was really present in your childhood. Mm -hmm. Always staying curious with each other. What way of giving through gifts have I done that you were really touched by? So today is our weekly Sunday fun day, and I'm about to go pick up Christina. And I got her a little gift. I'm gonna try and surprise her with it. Should be fun. No, you didn't. Why do you do that? That's so not cool. What did you think of the gifts on the Sunday fun day? <laughs> it was pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I am a sucker for jewelry, and he knows it. Thank you. I know jewelry is a pretty safe bet, and I like to get them kind of personalized, whether it's getting something written on them, engraved. Today, I bought Trent a gift. He has no idea what it is. It's sitting on his bed. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> What the? My pinata! Oh, I finally got my running shoes. So, what'd you think? I loved it. Finally got my dinosaur pinata. I've been wanting that forever. And I've needed new running shoes for six months, so I was thoughtful of her. Thank you, babe. Especially with the little notes and the card that she got me. Words of affection. I like that stuff. How did you feel? So I was like, damn, 
she actually did the laundry for once. Right off the bat, you guys may be thinking we're very materialistic because we love receiving gifts from our significant others. Which isn't necessarily not true, but it's not completely true. We like our gifts because it's going the extra mile. And in our case, it's how we really communicate our love for each other. And get your partner something. It can be cheap, expensive, doesn't really matter as long as they know you got it for them. Having Sylvie examine our love language really helped us out. 